I landed a job by sheer luck actually as assistant to Bill Constable who was then art director of the Borovansky Ballet. Of course in those days, this is now 1951 and um, there were no schools of scene design. You learnt on the job, you learnt by observation more than anything else and did all the menial jobs like cleaning the brushes and washing the palette, and sweeping the floor and doing all that and filling in the big areas that nobody ever saw. Just before Bill left Australia he thought that I ought to start designing as well and so being a friend of everybody in the theatre he he rang Doris Fitton who's the f sort of extraordinary woman who ran the independent theatre. I learnt an enormous amount at the independent because uh, it had a tiny stage, uh, very limited lighting equipment and so we learnt to sort of paint the light on the scenery to a certain extent. There was little money around even to spend on the production itself, so you had to be inventive. Uh, there were no subsidies, for instance, and there were no state theatres as there are now. And I started then to be asked to do other things. Uh, I designed a couple of operas, and then the John Alden Company was formed uh, by J.C. Williamson's, and I designed uh, a Shakespeare for John, and then the music hall opened in Neutral Bay, which was a sort of converted cinema. And I was asked to do the interior design for the hall, which was great fun because I did murals and things in the foyer of old Sydney and sort of, it was all a bit mad. And then out of the blue, uh, I was asked to uh, take over from John Truscott, who was leaving St Martin's theatre as resident designer to go overseas and I came down on a two-year contract and I ended up staying 11 years. So I did an enormous number of productions at St Martin's because we did a new one every four weeks as a rule. St Martin's eventually folded up the, the, again as a private organisation which it was uh, it was starting to feel the pinch and of course at that stage the 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 state theatre companies were formed, the Melbourne Theatre Company, which was then the Union Theatre, uh, and Sydney Theatre Company, and so they really took over from, uh, from the little theatres that were around when I was a young man. There were more resources, they were, they were being funded properly by the government and universities and all sorts of people, and there was money to do really very, very, very good productions. For the first time I was out of a job, but I wasn't out of a job for more than two days because uh, Ross Turner rang me up, who was scenic, chief scenic artist at J.C. Williamson's, and said, you better come and work here. Uh, so off I went and worked for Williamson's for four years in the scenic department, and I think the first show I painted for Williamson's or help paint was a little night music. Again, Williamson's were finding it tough too because they were a private enterprise firm and however big they were, they were, they were finding the cost of touring and, and maintaining large companies impossible to do. So Williamson's gradually wound down, still doing shows but sort of uh, uh, contracting out. They suggested to Ross that, that, that he form a private company. So he approached me and said, how about you and I going into partnership and forming Scenic Studios? And um, Scenic Studios has been going ever since. Uh, I've retired from it now, but I still sort of do guest spots when they need me. And it trains people, and that's what I'm pleased about, that it's got young people on the staff that, that I think uh, uh, you know, are well and truly going to be able to carry on the tradition. Scenic Studios has painted virtually everything in the Australian ballet repertoire and the one that sticks out in my mind that I enjoyed doing most of all was Manon uh, because it was very pictorial, it was very painterly and it needed all the tricks that a scene painter could use to, to actually do it. I find 
that the link between painting and design has been lost a little bit. It's become architectural and minimalist and and sometimes that cuts across the work itself. I sound like old grumpy old gentleman, but 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 a lot of young scene designers seem to be doing the same thing. They all seem to be frightened of colour. Uh, so everything's black or white or grey or mirrors or something, but it, uh, it, it seems to me to be sort of uh, not easy on the eye. There are some designers who are now using computerised imagery, so there's no sort of handwriting of the artist on it. It's, it's mechanically contrived. I, I find it impersonal. And I would not care to have to, to interpret a computerised design because I feel there's no pleasure in it.